When we learn to color, it's usually from a box of crayons with bright, bold colors, and they have a charm all their own. But you might have noticed that the world is made of colors that are a lot more subtle. So, what about a new way of coloring with easy to blend and very subtly shaded eyeshadow from a dollar store to make art for your home with love for a country house? Coloring with eyeshadow is easy to do. You simply rub the powder into paper with a swab. And in this case, we used it on photo paper with high contrast pictures. We hand colored six different projects using eyeshadow and a little bit of soft pastel. And we've got lots of tips on how you can do this too. We got eyeshadow from the dollar store and we also used some expired makeup that we put aside. We also bought a big eyeshadow palette on eBay for about 10 bucks for 120 colors, which is a lot of fun. But if you have problems finding eyeshadow varieties in your region, you can even buy dollar store makeup online. We'll give you a link to the discount makeup site that we found in the video description. And the colors you'll find there are really wide ranging. To apply the colors, we used cotton swabs. We used ordinary swabs, pointed swabs, and tiny swabs meant for tattooing. We used long swabs and cotton balls too for a few tasks, which we'll show you later. So eyeshadow works best on matte paper, so whether you make the prints yourself or you have them made professionally as we did, you'll want to test everything first before you work on that final print. Our paper was like paper canvas with a slight texture, and it did not take eyeshadow very readily. It only left a slight coating, but this turned out to be good since we learned that a light coat of eyeshadow on pictures of water or sky created a film through which you could still see a lot of details, and it made like an atmospheric effect that was very realistic. For vivid and deeper colors, we blended the eyeshadow into a few drops of linseed oil, which created a mini oil pastel. And that's how we colored most of our prints. You won't need much oil or powder. We dipped the swab into the oil, then we picked up the powder, and then we rubbed it on the print. So you may see a few crumbs form, but you can blend them in or you can blow them away. Linseed oil hardens a little as it dries, so what we did is use some tweezers to break up the palettes a little bit if they got a little hard. And all of this really does make a big mess of your palettes, but if you don't mind that, let's fly through our projects together and, and see what we learned. The first project we created was a collage of vintage botanicals. We'll provide you the link if you'd like to give this a try because this was a great graphic for practicing coloring and blending. We turned it into a brown and white print added lettering and began by taping the graphic down on a work surface. We learned that tinier pieces of tape will actually work much better because these large pieces can tear the image when you remove it. This project was straightforward coloring using eyeshadow mixed with a few drops of linseed oil and we practiced the pointed swabs, the pouncing up and down, the tiny swabs which turned out to be really useful and everyday round swabs. We colored all the elements on the print and we left some areas pure white, feathering the colors together and trying layers of color on top of each other. This was all an experiment at this point. We used a normal cotton ball to gently remove some of the excess powder and it was looking pretty good at this point, but to bring it up to the next level, we colored the background behind the figures using moody colors like blues and greens and violets and we used the tiny swab so that we get really close to the edges. And this all created one large connected shadow to hold the various pieces together visually and it gave the whole thing a more vintage graphic look. And here's the shape of the background shadow. And here's how the final print turned out. One thing that turned out to be really tricky was coloring over black, like the cherries at the top. What we found worked was to color it white first with a pastel, and then you can layer your colors on top. The next project was a photo of a canal scene in Venice. We turned it into a brown and white, or what is called a sepia tone print. And in this project, we used both eyeshadow and experimented with adding in some soft pastels too. 
We dipped the swabs in oil and we rubbed it on the side of the pastel. And you can also rub the pastel directly onto the paper too and blend it into a film on top. We found that rosy colors mixed with oil were just what we wanted for the buildings of Venice. And having whole palettes of light colors like these reds is also great for creating harmony. We also found that the black powder worked very well for shadows because we wanted to create almost like a tunnel effect where the edges were dark. We also found that the black powder was good for emphasizing the windows and the edges too. But on this project, we discovered that the oil blended colors were too heavy for water and sky. And we ended up making horizontal and vertical lines with the white pastel, creating like a film to soften it. We also used it to put some highlights where needed. But because the white makeup wasn't strong enough, that's when the pastel was used. Well, we were beginning to realize it was going to be important to learn how to remove colors whenever we made a mistake. But anyway, here's the finished Venice piece. We'll add a link in the description where you can download this photo and practice this project for yourself. For project three, we wanted to see how the colors worked on a portrait and more foliage, both of which we think can be very tricky. Also, this tape didn't work either, but because we printed our pictures in brown and white sepia tone, this went a long way towards creating natural skin tones. And you could leave the flesh uncolored, but it's also fun to use eyeshadow to add a bit of blush and to do the clothing. And you might want to practice on an extra print because it's easy to overcolor your prints. And this is where we began to experiment with scraping the colors back with the wooden sticks on the back side of the swabs, and that worked pretty well. We also believe that to make the foliage look better, don't be afraid to mix in some reds and yellows because even though there are a lot of green eyeshadow tints available and they are grouped together in harmonious combinations, too much of green begins to look a bit fake. What we started to notice with Project 3, the oil and makeup combo made the photo start to look like an oil painting. And we also found that by using an emery board on the colors, we could file them back and create some highlights. It's all about adding some contours with deepening shades of the same color. And for a three-dimensional effect, we added these little highlights in the girl's hair with the emery board. And that really helped bring life to the project. So this is the finished portrait. For project four, we colorized this beautiful portrait of two ladies. It's actually a miniature, just three by five inches. So the tiny swabs worked really well. The idea was to give the picture a pop art look with bright areas of color. But so that it didn't look too flat, we created some clapboard effects with the emery board. We used the pointed swab to shape in some clouds and we wanted the focal point of the art to be a beautiful yellow coat the very picture of happiness with a touch of orange to set it off and to tie in with the colorful houses. If you find that your blacks get dusty or filmy, you can darken them with plain oil. So here's the finished project. Linseed oil will bleed through paper, but it dries. It does not stay oily. For project five, in keeping with the pop art theme, we downloaded this beautiful portrait of Marilyn Monroe to see if we could create art reminiscent of Andy Warhol's work. We made the portrait square and we gave it a sepia tone. And then we thought it might help to have a stencil to make the sharp lines, but we found that the tiny swabs were fine for making relatively sharp edges. And it really did feel strange doing makeup on a portrait with real makeup, but it works. And what we learned on this simple project was that layering the colors made this very rich. So we colored all the areas once. We call that the flat version. Then we colored each again with deeper shades of the same colors. And finally, we made some areas of contrasting color. Like this for the pop art feel. And here's how it turned out. Because we love waterfalls and always wanted a special image of one of our own, for Project 6, we married together many pictures and photos of waterfalls in an editing program to make a super tall, magical image. And of course, we made it a brown and white, high contrast print, and we even bought an antique oval frame for this project. 
We colored it last because we wanted to make sure we knew as many techniques as possible before tackling it. Look, we finally got the tape thing right. Small is definitely better. Eyeshadow comes in the most wide-ranging colors imaginable, much more than what you'd find in a set of pastels or paints. But we imagined we'd use maybe three colors for this waterfall, brown, green, blue. But we changed our mind as we went along. Because eyeshadow powder is semi-transparent, you can color over details many times and still see them, and you can create filmy colors for atmospheric effects. For this type of coloring, you want to have plenty of swabs available. And use a fresh swab every time you change colors. If you use an emery board, be sure to use a light touch when you're removing color. We also found out that you can remove color with just a bit of water on a swab, and even better, you can use alcohol. It does a great job, but you must use it only on the white areas because it will remove your print as well. Don't mix the alcohol and oil swabs. You can use the long handled swabs to make sure that you don't confuse the oil and the alcohol swabs. Here we've made a template of the frame shape to give us a good idea what the finished picture is gonna look like once it's framed. Eyeshadow often comes in metallic shades too, you've probably noticed, but we tried to avoid these. But inevitably we picked them up and used them and sometimes we colored over them, but then we started noticing that we kind of liked the look of it. It looked pretty interesting in different lights and we decided to keep a few copper effects on these rocks around the waterfall. And it made us wonder about doing art specifically using metallic eyeshadow. We're down to the last few finishing touches now and we've thrown away our idea of using just three colors and we've decided to use a cobalt blue in the shadows. A few last things we need to do before we frame this. We're going to spray fix it with Grunbacher's spray fixatives in a matte finish. Then we're going to cut it and we're going to put it in the antique frame. And here's the finished waterfall. So where do you begin if you want to color prints like these? Well first you choose a picture and you can start by looking through any photos you might have and putting your prints on a flatbed scanner. And we'll put info below on how to do that. Or you can take a new photo, or you can even take a photo of a photo with a close-up lens. There are close-up lenses for every type of camera, even phone cameras. But you can also take a great shortcut to photo art by using a stock company. There are some great free sites with images you can download that will be amazing in your home. So search on a favorite subject, whether it's nature or landscapes, or travel and architecture, food and still lifes, or anything old fashioned, nostalgic, romantic, or super trendy, or anything that's meaningful to you. On the right paper, you can color on top of a color photo, or you can start with black and white and even add graphics to it. Print it on matte paper and color on that. Once you find the image you want, you want to download it so you can make adjustments to it in a photo editing program. And so you want to download a fairly large version of the picture that you want. Unless you're doing a miniature, in that case you could download a small one. If you're going to use a picture frame, it's a good idea to start with those measurements. We want to make sure our finished artwork will be the right size when we prepare for printing. So we start with the measurements, then we use a photo editing program for the next steps. We're big proponents of Affinity Photo, but all these programs are really good, so use the one you're comfortable with. Whatever program you use, you want to start by making a document. Make it the size of the measurements that you want. Make sure it's at least 300 dots per inch in resolution so it won't be blurry. Then shrink or stretch your picture to fit that document. It's okay to shrink it any amount that you want, but if you're gonna stretch it, don't stretch it much more than 20%. So basically there are two things to do to a picture that you wanna hand color, and both are optional, but the two things we always do ourselves is to change it to black and white or sepia tone, and we adjust the contrast so there are lots of light areas that are easy to color. And all editing programs do these things. And to learn how to do anything that you haven't learned yet in those programs, all you have to do 
type the name of the program you're using in a search engine and type the editing function that you would like to do. And you'll get lots of tutorials that will walk you through how to change the look of your image until it's just right for hand coloring. Now all you need is practice and lots and lots of cotton swabs. Don't miss the next episode of Love for a Country House. Click the Sun logo to subscribe to steffymccarthy.com. See you later.